morning, everybody. I've been asked to do a tutorial on how I do the backgrounds with the pan pastels. Bear with me. The only videos I've ever done have been cat videos. So if I break into a high kitty cat animal voice, it's because I'm used to talking to the cats while I'm <laughs> shooting a video. So anyway, this shows you a little bit of the brick. I just did this real quick to give you an idea, and I'll show you how I did it. And I'll show you how I do one on top of one of Bennett's drawings. Um, to start, let me show you the products I'm using. Let me put a blank down. First of all, the paper. I got a ream of cardstock at Walmart, which in England is Asda. But I would think any stationery store. I also order it from Amazon. This is a um, 67 pound weight. I believe it was if this much, maybe, maybe $4 or four fifty five for a ream of cardstock. It's a nice thick paper. This is 67 pound. I also work with 97, I believe it is. To each his own. One was on sale one time. I happened to pick it up. But that's why I like the digital book, so I can print on the type of paper that I like to work with. And since I work so much with markers, they're very wet, and it just seems to help the blending process. The printed books, no offense to any of the artists out there, the printed books on Amazon uh, has a very low quality paper um, in terms of thickness, and I just can't get that same blending look of, of wetness and shading uh, as I can with cardstock. So first of all, get yourself some cardstock, 8.5 by 11. I think you guys call it A4 in England. Uh, okay, there's your ring. Secondly, these pastels. Now, I just adore them. Uh, they're called Faber Castell. They look like a chapstick. I'm breaking all kinds of copyright laws, I'm sure. Um, they're the gelatos. If you go to Amazon and look up Faber Castell gelato, they come in, in colorized sets. I just ordered a really cool set that's called Steampunk, and they look metallic. I can't wait. They're going to be awesome, especially because I have wheels and time stenciling, and uh, I'm just going to go nuts. So, I put them in one of these little dollar boxes, you know, you can get at the Dollar General's Dollar Tree. Uh, I have them for pretty much all my products if I have a number of products. Uh, so, there's, the <laughs> just jump right out. That's the storage end of it. What else did I want to show you? Have handy a little Dixie cup with a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of water. And these are cosmetic sponges. I am pretty sure not only Walmart, but probably every pharmacy in the world carries these little guys. And they're wonderful. And I am so cheap that I rewash them and I reuse them. You know? Recycle, recycle, recycle. Plus, when you grow up with parents who grew up during the Great Depression, you pretty much reuse everything. Oh. Look at this. I have a whole bag. Uh, these are generic. I don't know. I would say maybe 99 cents. And trust me, the, if you, you rewash them, you'll have this until your grandchildren can use them. What else did I want to show you? Uh, stencils. I'm kind of anal, so I bought a file folder with tabs, and I have them by genre, mainly because I do a lot of different kinds of crafts, and I like having everything sorted. So the background skies, dots, oops, can't see, swirl, steam, Stream, steam, oh, that's my steampunk. Here, here's a good example of the steampunk. Awesome. Wait till those metallics come in, right? All right, I'm getting sidetracked. Squirrel. Okay, let me shut that. Let's get started. There's one other thing, just remembered. Uh, this is surgical tape. And when I do the larger ones, I'll show you here. The whole sheet. This is larger, this is a 12 by 12, and they're great if you want to do around a large amount. I'm going to try and block this so no one steals this picture. This is out of Bennett's new third book, just released yesterday. If you put this over top, you can see how you're going to want to, through your bubbles, just go along here. But I will use surgical tape in this case, mostly because it's bigger and it's going to move on me and when I get to this one I will show you how I tape it down a little bit okay so that's that that's this here comes the magic you ready you ready I don't know if you're ready okay let me see this is the one I used yesterday and I can't reach it right now 
the Tooth Fairy, the little dragon guy. Um, and normally, like I said, I don't necessarily tape these down because they're smaller, but let's just for the sake of argument do that this time. And it just, it's not too sticky, but it's just sticky enough to keep it in place. And you can buy a whole case. Once again, Amazon, oh, I don't know. Was this three or four dollars? And I mean, there are, <laughs> again, your grandchildren will be able to use them. Okay, let's go to my brick. This brick just turned out so neat yesterday. Ed, Ed is my hubby. Ed was even blown away by the awesomeness of the stencil. And if you want to know exactly what stencil this is, you're probably going to have to wait because if it's not stamped, some of them are. Excuse me, I have to remove my glasses. Yes, it is marked. This is lovely. This one, there's so much you can do with it. Look at the ivy and look at... I love garden stuff for my backgrounds. Look at this one. I guess your stones would go this way. And how beautiful is this with the keystone? Okay, it is by Crafters World. TheCraftersWorldShop.com Okay, I'm not sure if I purchased that from Amazon or directly from the site. It's hard to say at this point. I do have a wee shopping addiction. Let's begin. Get your wedge. Get a clean wedge. Clean wedge. I'm going to only, only do two uh, colors today. Um, I should probably do a dark and a bright just to show you contrast. And I don't know if there's a way you're supposed to do this dark first and then light. I don't not I don't know when it comes to shading and that type of thing what honestly the proper way is to do it. This is just the way I do it. Um, your teeny tiny, maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons of water in there. Take this and just make it damp, stick it in. Give it a good squeeze. And it's just just slightly damp. If you try to work with these gelatos. They're creamy, but they can be dry, and they can dry out once you've had them. I think that's the problem mostly with working with these. Uh, you can actually cr you crumble your, your sponge. So what I'll do, I'll show you how I lay down color. Not a lot, just and a little bit of pressure. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is art, people. This is not brain surgery. Let's have fun. Okay, so let's do our brown first. It's the darker shade. I don't even know if these are marked. Okay. So think about the cracks. We'll do the we'll put some brown in the cracks. And what I'm doing is just kind of rolling. That's the way I stencil. I mean I'm not really sure how the worst of the world does it. But you're going to want to put your shading, your darker, I think, on your outside. And you can tap and you can twist and you can circle however it feels good to you and however much you have on here you're gonna get a feel make sure you get in those little tiny lines because that's that's where the magic is those little details okay so you've done that your your sponge is damp why not use the other side for other color don't you know once again I'm frugal frugal bevy here's your red for the bricks, okay. Again, it's still damp. Apply vigorously. Again, however you're comfortable, you can dab. A little dab will do ya. That's an old commercial. Twist. I could break into song for Delinda. Twist and shout. Okay. I also can't sing, but that doesn't mean I won't. Okay. So here's circulars. Come on, you're an artist crafter. Just kind of make it up as you go along. Then everyone thinks you know what you're doing. So, what do you think? Let's lift this and see if the magic happened. The magic did happen, kids. Look at that. So simple, right? Two little colors, one second of dabbing. Now, if you run into this situation, now don't forget, this. I usually will do this over top of already pre-colored background, which I'm going to show you how to do that too. So this will blend in, but if you're really particular, like I am, and it bothers you, like it does me, golly, I only, my mother had this. Uh, this is a Pentel uh, eraser, that's the word. And you can just go in there, 
think I have a pink one here too, where you can just, right? Look at that. Look at that. Don't you wish all life's mistakes would go away that easily? How awesome is that? Helps if you push it up. So, you know, nobody has to know but you and I that they were there. And with another background, you're not even going to see those. So, that's our first way of doing things. While I'm on this page, uh, I will show you... This is, this is just by trial and error, how I, how I get that blended, soft, wispy effect. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to use these things, but this is the way I use them. And I never even watched a video. I just played around a lot. Uh, again, let's just try... Let's try to lay down two colors. And This is what I did also with that uh, little dragon fairy girl. Let's try some other color. Here's a dark blue. Okay. And let's get another sponge. Or, if we're frugal, really, you know, there's some spots on here, but, okay, if we're at 99 cents, let's let's live large. Okay, and let's get a fresh one, because this is a pretty dark color. And once again, in here, very damp. Very damp. Like, I don't know. Misty. Here we go. Again, let's go with the dark. And I'm just going to kind of have this as a backup. This is going to be my blender. So you can just put him aside for a second. When I am doing a whole background, I really lay it down. I mean, I lay it down tough. I circular, fill it in. I don't like to go this way because your lines may show up. I'm big on the whole circular thing. Okay? Don't be afraid to lay it down. It's art. Live large. So, you know, you kind of want to really well, you get some color down there. Let's bring it out this way. Am I in, in camera range? Oh, I am. Okay. If you could see how I have my camera. Totally side story here. It's my iPad, and it's literally standing up with rulers and pens are holding it up in one of my bins. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having a heck of a good time doing it. Okay, back to this. Fill it in. Circular, 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 circular. I'm kind of disappointed I haven't been visited by a kitty cat yet, but that will come, I'm sure. All right. Now, where you laid that down, it's going to be dark. It's going to almost, you're going to see, it's going to leave behind a shadow where it almost looks like the paper soaked it up. So when I, when I begin with this, see how pretty that is? I just gently drag, drag my color out into something of a burst here. See? See what I'm doing? And you're not going to want some harsh lines, so I don't know, circular? And then I just drag, 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 drag. Now the other side is a little wet. Drag, 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 drag. I think you get the idea. If you want to start another color, I don't necessarily go right up against it because I like a little bit of uh, whiteness in there for contrast. Let's pick my favorite purple. Let's do some purple once again. This is a metallic, so this is going to look a little different. Uh, and I probably wouldn't use it together because this has an extra element of almost uh, shine and glittery almost, but used together with other glitters, wonderful. I just don't kind of like to mix this. I don't mix my metaphors. I don't mix my gelato types. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, here we go. There's another dark. And like I said, I'm laying it on kind of thick here. And I don't go all the way up into there, right? Okay. Then I will wrap this up here. This is just to give you an idea. Uh, because it's in the same kind of color groove, I guess you could use this again. So it's feeling a little, a little uh, dry. I dipped it again, a little squeeze. Doesn't hurt to have some paper towels handy, as most things in life. It's good to have paper towels around. I think I moved my camera. Darn it. All right, so we're going to move this up. Why don't we remove this? There we go. And my slightly damp. Here we go again. Okay. 
it's all in the wrist. It's all, <laughs> it's actually all in the water. That seems to work for me. I, I guess, I don't even know if these are oil or if they're water based. But for me, I just really enjoy the, the dragging and the look of the drag. It reminds me a little bit of tie dye, and I am a hippie from way back when. So that gives you an idea there. And if you want to go into the blue, you know, why not? Have it fade, have the fade less garish. But I, I do like, see how where I actually put the, the color down, it stays very dark. But depending upon how much you did with that, you can pull it out and you can make it look very soft. All right, that should cover those two things. For the piece de resistance, my French is terrible and that's all I know. Let me give you an idea of <clears throat> how to do an entire page because that was kind of a small one. And since I'm off camera, I am going to put her up here. Of course, I dropped the stencil, so let me just try to watch the camera and the page at the same time. I put her up here for now. I normally don't do that. I normally work against the rim here, but okay. I have to <laughs> pick up the bubble. There we go. All right. So, as I said, and you can see through here pretty well, I think what I'm going to do in this case is I will tape my on camera. Yep. Bear with me as I tape the most boring part of it. Just give me a second here. If I knew how to edit, I would take this whole part out. So talk amongst yourselves while I do this. I'm sure you're all getting the idea. You're so creative, all of you. We all are, so. Learning from one another is just such a blessing, isn't it? Okie dokie, smoky. All right, this doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing in life has to be perfect, especially art, right? Yes, correct. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, I'm trying to think of where I should start with this. How about some gray? Bubbles are really fun to do because if you look at the light of a bubble, it's never just clear. It always has reflection. And not only does it have a light reflection where a lot of people put their, their little like C, backward C's to, to, to give that light look, you know what I'm talking about? Here. Let Bevy show you. For example, if this was a bubble, okay. Let's do one. Let's just draw this in for the sake of argument. A lot of people will just take, you know, your gel pen and do do this. Do that little like circular motion where the light is coming in and you know you do your little C up here. Well, I love bubbles with a little bit of lavender and a little bit of pink. Because in Bevy Land, that's what color bubbles are. <laughs> so why don't we start out we're going to do gray, a little gray. Excuse me while I dig. A little gray, a little pink. Now, these again are uh, more of the metallic y looking, but I think in this case, because it's a bubble, we'll be able to get away with it. Like I said, I don't like to mix my creams with my metallics, but in this case, I think it's going to work. Now, bear with me. I haven't actually done this before, so we're going to learn together. I have got, I think this is fig, no, this is elderberry, this is strawberry, this must be <laughs> the fruit series, and this is just a steel gray, I don't even know if it's a warm or a cold, but it's a gray, and let's start out with fresh sponges, and I see my water is a little blue, but I think we'll be able to get away with it. We're going to dip our sponge again, right, squeeze it out. Just a little damp. See, you're an expert already. And I'm just going to do this section up here because I'm sure you have way more things to do than listen to me talk all day. Okay, this little bit of gray. Okay. And as much as I would love to just be able to do tiny edges, I don't have the patience for that. 
<laughs> I don't know if it's me being a Taurus, my age, I'm not sure. But that's kind of why I also like to color with markers. It goes quickly and it satisfies my need for completion within a decent amount of time. If I go to color with pencils, it'll take me two days, especially to do a bannet. And I like to do one a day, like a vitamin. I like to get one completed. So in this case, we're going to move. We're going to do large things quickly. So here's our gray. doesn't seem like it's putting down enough color. Let me add some more. And like I said, give it a good... Let's try try some circular, see if that puts it on the sponge any easier. Okay, and I think instead of dabbing in this case, well, no, dabbing's good. And you can get as close to the wings as you want to because we're going to go back in like I did earlier, right? And we're going to erase, which I'm looking for my eraser and I can't see right now, but... So we'll use this one this time. Uh, you know, we can go in and take that off your, your pre-colored. This is going to happen at the end. I have never done a background first and then gone in and colored. I don't want to drag my hand across all that color and possibly transfer it. I'm really fussy uh, when it comes to smudging and stuff. So this is glass, and I Windex this every time between each and every thing, every step that I do because I like to keep my workspace clean when it comes to color transfer. That was the blue hitting the floor, by the way. All right, so here we go again. More gray. We're going to do these bubbles if it kills us. Okay, down into the bubbles. The bubbles are actually printed along there. I'm kind of dragging, kind of circulating, right? Circular motion here. So it's just a light, light gray. Okay, let's come down in here. So we did the top portion. And this is nice. It's so big, you're not going to have to pick it up and move it and try to match stuff. Just let it be, kids. Think of the Beatles. Let it be. All right, other side's a little damp. Let's do some pink. See what I mean when I say it's a little metallic-y? It's really cool. But here's a little pink, and, and I think pink shows up pretty in bubbles. Once again, go in lightly. Twist, turn, shout, right? A little rub, 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 a little circular. Okay, little pink, and we've used both sides, but it's a forgiving sponge. Keep taking my lids off and not putting them back on. Let's move all that. And oh, I don't know. Do we have enough room back here? Okay, just made it a little more damp again. Let's just put Mr. Blue on here. And like I said, I will go. <laughs> I'll take a handful of these that are dirty throughout the day and stick them in the sink with some dishwashing detergent and hot water and I just let them soak and then I do a bunch of squeezing to get all the color out and I reuse them. Like I said, they're, they're not expensive. I think that bag's 99 cents, but well, you know, someone has to take care of Mother Earth. Why not us? Alrighty. Some blue. And let's see how this turned out. It's going to be subtle. I'm using the pastels of the pastels, but I still think you'll get an idea of the extra bubbles, right? And it has shading. See the shading? And you can still go in with Mr. Gel Pen. Watch. I will do that. And I have two ways of putting, adding white. I, I will use my Sakura. I guess that's how you pronounce it. White gel pen. Just ignore that black. That was just, Remember, that was just for... Uh, demonstrative purposes, but um, yeah, you won't have that black. However, let's move Mr. Stencil. If you do want to still add that little white, you know how you make it almost like a, a wedge when you do your, your little white reflection? And you can do another one down here. If you can get your gel pen to work, which of course mine won't right now. But I think you get the picture. This one might be drying out. Anyway, you get the idea of how to do a reflection in a bubble. I also use this quite heavily. It's a uh, Recollections picture, uh, pen, and it's almost like a chalk. I love it. I love it. It's an opaque pen. I have a lot of colors, but my white is my go-to all the time. 
uh, to add highlights. So let's do a bubble with that kind of a highlight. See what I did there? Just a little bit of my pen. I think it gives it more depth. And, oh, folks, you know what? I think that might be it. So those are my go-to favorite cast towels. Oh, and I will show you again, you know, get rid of your mistakes. There are no mistakes in art. They're just happy coincidences. See how that comes up? And you know what? Even then, you can do you could do layering of bubbles. One could be darker or lighter, above or below it. All right, folks, this is Bevy signing off. That is my gelato tutorial. Thanks for asking for me to do it. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, let me know. Bennett, thank you so much for allowing me to put this on your page, and thank you for all your beautiful drawings. To everyone, namaste.